Hello friends, welcome to another lecture of Make Mechanical Simple. Before going to the lecture, if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe the channel and click the bell icon for further updates and don't forget to share it with your friends so that they can also learn online. So let's make mechanical simple. And today we are going to discuss a simple topic from the subject of mechanics of solids. That is, we are going to discuss the deformation of a uniformly tapering circular bar under a load P. So what is the deformation of a uniformly tapering circular bar? So here I have drawn a uniformly tapering circular bar having initial diameter as D1 at one end and the final diameter as D2 at the other end. And the bar is subjected to a load P. That is a tensile load. Okay, that is a problem. And here we have to find the deformation of this bar due to this loading. So what is the usual deformation equation? We have a usual deformation equation delta L is equal to PL by A, right? Delta L is equal to PL by AE. Can we apply this equation directly here? Here P is same, the load acting is P, length is same, Young's modulus of the material, E is also same. But what about the area? See, the area when we move from the left end to the right end, the area is keep on varying, right? That means area is, in this case, uh, area is keep on decreasing as we move from the left end to the right end, right? That means here we can say area is not a constant, area is a variable. If any of the quantity in a particular equation is a variable, in such a case, what we have to do is, we have to consider a differential element, a differential element, and then we have to find the deformation of that differential element then we can extend that concept to the total area or the total length okay so here what i'm going to do is i'm going to consider a differential element a differential element having thickness dx or having length dx at a distance x from the left end at a distance x from the left end okay so here we can say area is a function of x that means area keep on varying with respect to x okay so what you are do to, going to do is we are going to apply the deformation equation pl by ae for the differential element and we are going to find the deformation of the differential element so what is the deformation of the differential element deformation of the differential element delta l is equal to p is same if the load acting is here is p the load acting on the differential element also will be equal to p now what is the length of the differential element here you have to take care the length of the differential element is only dx okay so length of the differential element is only dx and what about the area of the differential element okay so area let it be there what, what is Young's modulus is same so we have to find the area of the differential element that means the cross-sectional area at this section so let's see how to find the cross-sectional area at this section so to find the area at this cross-section we have to find the diameter of this cross-section if you know the diameter d at this cross-section we can find the area as pi by 4 d square so our first step in this derivation is to find the diameter of the differential element so how can we write the diameter at the differential element from the geometry of this figure see i already told you the area is keep on varying with respect to l in the same way we can say the diameter is also varying with respect to x so can we write an equation for d in terms of x mathematically yes it is possible for that what you have to do is we have to find what is the change of diameter with respect to l 
or what is the change of diameter per unit length we can write it as change of diameter per unit length is d1 minus initial diameter minus final diameter divided by l now we have to find what will be the change when we move an x distance from the left end because considering from the left end we are moving an x distance then what will be the change so for that we have to multiply this quantity with x am i right now we have to subtract this change of diameter from the initial diameter okay so d1 minus this change okay so this represents the total change when we move an x distance from the left and this is the initial value from the initial value we are subtracting the change that means we will get d so this is the equation for diameter at the differential element now for simplicity because we will be using this equation and the derivation several times so for simplicity i am taking this quantity as k d1 minus kx some k kx so d is now d1 minus kx and what will be the area now area at the differential element will be pi by 4 d square that is equal to pi by 4 d1 minus kx whole square so we have got the equation of area in terms of x in terms of x okay now we can substitute this value of area here okay we can substitute this value of area here so that we will get the deformation of the differential element now we have to extend this concept to the total length so we have to integrate this equation between 0 to l to find the total deformation here i have substituted the value of area here now we have to integrate this equation to find the total deformation so total deformation is equal to i am taking the constants outside that is p by pi by 4 e these are all constant integral between 0 to l and inside integral we have dx by d1 minus kx whole square now this is in the form of 1 by x square right what is the integral of 1 by x square we all know that it is nothing but minus 1 by x so performing the integration what will get p by 4 pi by 4 e e is constant and performing the integration we get to minus 1 by x that is d1 minus kx and don't forget to divide with the coefficient of x here the coefficient of x is minus k so we have to multiply in the denominator with a minus k so this minus minus gets cancelled now for this term we have to apply the limit between 0 to L okay I hope all of you know these things okay now uh, we have to before applying the limits we have to substitute back the value of K here then only we can apply the limit okay so I am substituting back the value of K pi by 4 these are the constant what is the value of K we know that it is uh, d1 minus d2 divided by l let it be there and inside bracket we have 1 divided by d1 minus d1 minus d2 divided by l into x and within the limit 0 to l now we have to apply the limits so applying the limits what i'll get is uh, applying the limits p by pi by 4 e we have to repeatedly write these terms again and again okay pi by 4 e d1 minus d2 divided by l let it be there and uh, now 
inside bracket what you have to write see when you are applying the first limit l for x l l gets cancelled so d1 minus d1 becomes 0 what is remaining is minus of minus d2 minus of minus d2 is plus d2 so it is only 1 by d2 minus now when you are applying the second limit 0 here this entire term becomes 0 right so what is remaining is only 1 by d1 now we have to simplify this bracket term so simplifying that bracket term what you will get p by pi by 4 e d1 minus d2 divided by l simplifying this bracket term d1 minus d2 divided by using lcm d1 d2 is the lcm right so now we can simplify this equation by cancelling d1 minus d2 now we are almost done with the derivation only we have to rearrange the equation that means we have to write this l in the numerator okay so this equation become pl divided by pi by 4 i'm writing d1 d2 first i'll tell you why d1 d2 e now this is the equation for deformation of a uniformly tapering circular bar now if you observe this equation this is almost similar to the equation pl by a only difference is instead of area pi by 4 d square we have pi by 4 d1 d2 and the interesting thing is that this area pi by 4 d1 d2 is the geometric mean of the initial and final areas so i hope you guys have understood this derivation well so if you like this video give me a thumbs up and give your valuable suggestions and feedback and don't forget to subscribe the channel and click the bell icon for further updates and also share it with your friends so that they can also learn online